There has been a lot of speculation about the roof cages on the Russian tanks, more commonly known as the cope cages. But no one that I have seen talk about them actually went to look at what Russian sources were talking about those cages when they first showed up. I have done just that and I have to say that I have found some pretty interesting results. Not only that, I have also read up a bit on the studies conducted by the Russians themselves, the Ni Stali to be more precise, the company that develops and makes armor for Russian tanks, which does include the cage armor. And I do want to start with the study in question, because I think it will give a better understanding of what we are dealing with here. The Ni Stali has developed the cage armor we have seen on the sides and the rears of the Russian tanks like the 72 b 3 m and even T-14 Armata. The cage armor works in a way that it catches an AT rocket or some other hollow charge threat between the rods of the cage. By doing that, the shape of the shaped charge, pun not intended, is distorted and as such can no longer function as a shaped hollow charge and instead of sending the penetrating jet, just explodes or doesn't detonate at all. Now, their study has concluded that the chances of that happening are the highest when the metal rods are very narrow and the space between them is wide enough. In this graph, the letter D is the diameter of the metal rods. The horizontal line is the space in millimeters between the rods, and the vertical one represents the probability that the threat will be neutralized. The threat in this case was an RPG-7 rocket. We can see that the peak performance was achieved with the rods being 10 mm in diameter and the space between them being around 80 mm. The probability of the rocket being neutralized was at around 65%, or 0.65 out of 1 on this scale. Of course, this does not mean that it would work like this against any threat, but it gives us a general idea that more narrow rods and more space in between them is better. Now, my theory is that the cages that we see on the roofs of the Russian tanks have not been designed by Ni Stali, but are the so-called field modifications. First point that would lead to something like that is the fact that there are multiple variations of the cages. Some good, some bad, some offering better coverage, some offering very little. Second point is that the bad ones have a very weird design. If we take a closer look at one of them, we will see that the rods are wide and the space between them is narrow. The complete opposite of what the studies have shown. Now, there are some decent ones. If we look at this one, for example, we can see that the rods are indeed narrow and there is a lot of space between them. This could technically work as a proper cage armor. Now, if we look at the actual Ni Stali designed cages, we will see that they do follow the principles from their studies. Narrow rods, which appear to be reinforced with extra length at the back, and pretty decent space between them. That is what proper research-based design looks like. This, this is not that. I did some digging and I found out that the tank units of the Southern military districts in summer last year received an order to install roof cages themselves, and apparently some tips were provided as well. And that makes sense to me, there are a lot of pictures of the building processes of the cages next to what appear to be some barracks. They are definitely not made in a factory like the actual cage armor is. No. If we look closer at the image, we will see that they took some long, weird metal bent in a V-shape and just cut them up into smaller pieces and just kept welding them together, because that is probably what they had at hand and was cheap. Others found some better ways to make the cages. We could also see some of them mount what look like sandbags on top of cages, and some thought that it would render the cages ineffective, but that is not true. The study I have been talking about also talks about having loose hard objects in bags over the cage armor will actually improve its effectiveness. In fact, Ni Stali has designed a system called Mantia, which is a system similar to the Nakitka cover, but has metal cylinders embedded into it. This was made to be used on lightly armored vehicles mounted on top of cages, but to my knowledge was never adopted, probably because it was too expensive since Nakitka is rarely used as it is. So what is their intended use? Well, it is hard to tell. I've heard people talk about how they are possibly made to counter RPGs fired from buildings in urban areas, but I don't think it is that. Many designs are just too high up and an angled shot from a building would just go under them. Are they against mortars? Not very likely, unless it's a high caliber one, like 120mm. Against the very common 82mm ones, no. These can't destroy a tank. 
even on the roof. They can damage the sights and other stuff, but so can they if they hit the cage. The cages are open, they aren't hard covered. Fragments can still go in between the rods easily and damage the equipment on the tank. The heavy artillery can't be stopped by the cages either, especially not against those more open ones. It would rip straight through the thin rods and detonate on the tank's roof. What is likely is that they are indeed cope cages and were mounted as an attempt to try and stop the javelins, because at the time, Ukraine had recently acquired them and knowing they are going to go to war, the Russian high command ordered their units to install these on their tanks. Or they were made as a result from the lessons learned from Syria and other wars Russia had studied, where drone-dropped hollow charge munitions were creating casualties for the tank units, and fearing Ukraine may employ similar tactics, they decided to order the units to install them. Both are likely, and truth to be told, we haven't really seen, so far at least, a javelin actually destroying a tank equipped with a roof cage, and we haven't even seen a drone drop an AT grenade and destroy a tank with a cage on top. Javelin has a lot of chances to work against such cages, but there is also a possibility, although very slim, that it would fail against them, since, as we have seen in the graphs from the study, even the worst cage armor has some chance to work. But in my honest opinion, these create more problems than they solve. They make it easier to spot the tank, they make it harder for the crew to quickly get out of the tank once it's struck, and I have seen videos of the crew surviving their tank, being hit and catching fire, and none of those were the tanks with the mounted cages. And the bad designed ones make it harder for the commander to look around with the open hatches. Maybe that is why we see the tanks with cages less than before. Yeah, you could argue that the ones with the cages have been destroyed, but remember, these cages are cheap and easy to make. If they have proved to be effective, we would see tank crews putting them on every tank, but that is simply not the case. There have been a couple of pictures of tanks with very crude and makeshift cages, if you can even call them that, seen in Ukraine, but those are far and few between. 99% of the tanks we have seen in the past month haven't had any cages mounted on their roof, which probably means they have realized it is not worth it. That would be all. If you like my content, you can support me on Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.